Today's video is about a very interesting concept that hasn't really been talked about much yet. So from something that I've very much been living through myself, I'm really excited to dive into a side of this area that not many people are really talking about or maybe even aware of. I'm Victoria, but you can call me Tori. I'm an empowerment and wellness coach, astrologer and actress, and I help late millennials and Gen Zs harness their voice and inner power to create their most meaningful and fulfilled life yet. But I've always been a wanderluster. You know, from a very young age, I grew up in a multicultural environment. So I've always had such a passion for culture, for travel, for meeting and learning about people from all four corners of the world. And as soon as I first discovered the term digital nomad a few years back, I knew that this was for me. I knew that this was how I wanted to live my life. What better way to spend your working life than to be doing your job, but also getting to travel and see the whole world at the same time. Why should traveling only have to be for two, three or four weeks of the year? Why can't we integrate this and get to see more and have more experiences whilst still doing what we need to do to pay the bills and stretch our minds? A couple of years ago, I finally manifested my reality of beginning the digital nomad life when I moved to Lisbon in Portugal to work my job remotely whilst building up Satori Shifts, my online brand and life coaching business. When we set goals, when we have our dreams and we envision our ideal life, we always imagine a utopia, right? But no matter what the situation is, it's always gonna come with challenges. There's always gonna be hard moments because we are still human beings and this is human life and life is not about always having the absolute best time. We need challenges in order to grow and evolve and mature and really develop within ourselves. After two years of doing the digital nomad life, I started to become aware of some of the more darker sides or challenges, unanticipated scenarios that I'd been living in. And this was really starting to ramp up quite a bit in the last six months. So Digital Nomad Life, first of all, has been absolutely incredible. It's been an amazing opportunity to gain new experiences. I've learned so much more about myself and about the world around me than I would have done if I had just been staying in one place in the same town that I grew up in Brussels, Belgium. And um, through that, I've met incredible people. I've had so many opportunities to do really cool things, both on a social level as well as on a professional level and ultimately just have a lot more enjoyment in my life and definitely a lot more sun. Um, tanning is becoming a lot more easier for me, which as a girl with Scottish ancestry um, is quite a miracle. <laughs> Despite this, I did start to become aware of some of the more challenging moments as the honeymoon period of living in a new place kind of wore off. The first reason I want to go in today for why digital nomad life can be challenging and not always pleasant is around the realm of relationships. So it's great to meet so many like-minded people. You know, a lot of the time digital nomads are people that really want more experience, that want to broaden their horizons, um, want a more rich and meaningful um, sense of life perhaps, you know, finding sense of life purpose, um, all of these kind of, you know, searching for deeper things, which for me is such a center point of, of who I am. So it's been amazing to really meet more people that I feel a genuine alignment with and connection with. One of the hardest parts about digital nomad life is the transient nature of living. A lot of the time, nomads only come to places for a short period of time to then move on, continue their travels and go and experience somewhere new. And it's not often that you find nomads that are really wanting to set root in a place for a long period of time, which does kind of come with the territory of being a digital nomad. So one of the biggest challenges I've found is, despite having met amazing people, it really kind of has felt this this kind of like short-term nature of connections. So as soon as I would start to feel like, oh, there's really potential to develop a really solid friendship here, then the person would leave. And although it's great to still be connected to these people and it's beautiful to see how much my network has flourished and I have people all over the world that I can also go and visit, um, it's just been really lacking in being able to kind of build up something solid in that realm of life. You do, however, have this contact called, con 
Con context? You do, however, have this concept, that's it, called the slow mat, and that is for a digital nomad, kind of like myself, that wants to go to a place now for more a prolonged period of time, giving you still that freedom and pleasure of, of being a nomad, but then knowing that you have people by your side that are wanting to be in it for a bit of a longer haul as well. On the romantic side of things, if you're someone that's looking for a long-term, more serious relationship, the digital nomad life could also be challenging for the same reasons. The next reason, this is probably the most crucial one, at least for me, this has been the most problematic one, and this has kind of been around mental health, um, more specifically around loneliness. Now, a lot of the time with digital nomads, when you're working remotely, you're working in a very solitary and isolated environment. Whether you decide to stay at your place, which can become very depressing, as all of us know after having lived through COVID, but particularly because of having lived through COVID, a lot of us now at the other side kind of are sick of being in that only in one house situation all the time, right? Another option you do have is to work in a co-working space but um, again, problems there if the co-workers around you are only in there for the short term as well. Also, there's that financial aspect that comes with the co-working spaces that unless your company is willing to pay or if you are self-employed and you can get some good tax refunds around that, it is a significant expense. So that is definitely a really big thing to take into consideration. The third reason is exhaustion and this really, for me, has been a big part of where I've been kind of low in creativity the last few months and, and even just on an everyday basis, not really feeling so much energy. A lot of energy is really required to live this digital nomad life, you know, especially if you're moving around a lot. You need to keep discovering cities or the areas, learning them, learning about them, learning the culture, and then to meet people, you need to do a lot of putting yourself out there, going to attend events, going to workshops, just finding out what's happening. Also learning the local language if you wanna try and really integrate and make an effort with the people. And the thing is, is that there's always more to discover. And this is the nature of human life, right? There's always more. And if you're a nomad, you know, as I said in the beginning, a lot of the time you're someone that wants to have more experience. So it's quite easy to fall into that trap, that ego ran trap of the mind of wanting to have more and just never, never settling, never feeling fully satisfied, always needing to seek the next big thing. And if you're not careful, this can really run yourself into a burnout if you're not taking enough time to relax, especially if you're living in the center of the city as I had been in Lisbon, it's very easy to get caught up in that energy and feeling like you need to be doing something all the time. Let's not forget finding accommodation is a very, can often be a very long and exhausting experience. If you're moving locations a lot, it is a lot to keep finding accommodation. It is super important to learn to find a sense of balance, really learning to be able to listen to your body and operate in accordance with what energy is available to you. I know for myself that my health has really suffered in these past months. Um, really taxing on my adrenals because my body just didn't know when to relax. This is super important because particularly if you're operating as someone who's self-employed or someone who's working in a creative job, your energy is so vital in order to get shit done, right? To be able to perform optimally and to be your just most productive and creative self and that is something that for me really took a nosedive in these past months as i was just trying to seize too much trying to attend too much trying to meet too many people completely dig into everything on offer in lisbon and um, make the most of it the next reason is ungroundedness and you know if you choose to live in a nomadic way of life one of the main hurdles that you have to face is really lacking a solid sense of home and I really do believe that as human beings for the majority of us we do really need to feel a solid sense of rooted to feel balanced and to feel energized and to feel stable within ourselves. If we're always on the move um, 
then this creates that stress in that body and, and also creates kind of more fear or uncertainty around what's coming next. Um, although it is great to be spontaneous and to live in the moment, sometimes we need to give our, our little minds the benefit of the doubt and, uh, you know, structure in a little bit of stability, a little bit of consistency, a little bit of just awareness of at least what is, what is coming ahead in the next couple of months. Unless you're living in an apartment, for me, I've always rented short-term rental apartments. Sometimes people might be living in a, in a hostel or in a really a more temporary accommodation kind of situation, which makes it really difficult to just prepare decent and basic home-cooked meals, which forces you to eat out more, which can also have implications on your health too, as generally speaking, when we eat out, we're not gonna eat as cleanly um, as we would when we're at home so there's that health perspective and then of course there's the financial aspect as well of eating out all the time and speaking of finances this moves me on to my fifth reason those four fingers fifth reason which is financial implications and yes if you are living the fast-paced nomadic life then there's a lot of financial things to take into consideration. Short-term accommodation is always gonna be more expensive than long-term. And then of course, all of these things that I've previously talked about, meals, your amenities, going out and socializing with people, going out and doing things, a lot of the time requires money. So this can be a really great opportunity to learn more about finance and become more literate on how you can save more money and ultimately hold back on spending in the places where you maybe don't need to spend as much, you know, setting more of a budget for yourself, having a bit of a financial structure behind you to help still feel that you're having a good time and still doing a lot of things, but knowing that you still have your spending in check there as well. So yeah, self-sufficiency is a really important one in that perspective and that's where maybe the slow mad way of life might be more attractive from that financial perspective the sixth reason and this actually is not so much about you as the individual but more about the society around you and that is the concept of gentrification now i can speak from first-hand experience of living in lisbon for the last two years which has quickly become the hottest digital nomad spot in europe it's crazy how much the city has changed in the last two years and this was actually a big reason why i decided to leave at least for the short term um, because of how much construction how was taking place, how many more people there were there compared to before, and how that ultimately created a more chaotic um, environment. Really a lot of loud noise, really just a lot more rush, a lot more changing and turning around of people, um, you know, even more so than um, even six months ago, to be honest, it's changed so quickly. Um, and yeah, gentrification. So what does that mean? It ultimately means when internationals come in and push the locals out, by the rising of prices. A lot of very wealthy internationals, um, particularly from the US, are moving into Lisbon right now. And you know, if you're coming to Portugal on an international salary, you know, <laughs> a lot of the time, um, you know, the, the prices on, on the housing in the center, like locals just can't pay that. You know, the minimum wage in Portugal is I think now around 900 euros, having previously been on 800 euros, which is just diabolical. So. A lot of expats, particularly Americans that have been coming in, have seen the prices uh, just absolutely skyrocket in the last few months. And this is definitely creating a lot of hostility, a lot of frustration um, amongst the locals. And yeah, it's for everyone making the properties a lot more expensive. So this is frustrating because this can also make the local people not like you. and not want to speak to you, not want to have anything to do with you, which contributes to that aspect of loneliness, contributes to that difficulty of being able to really build up a life there if you are wanting to be one, one of those people. And um, yeah, it changes the feel of, of the city as well. So this leads me to my last reason, which is we're doing a full circle here, going back to the concept of relationships, but also the possibility of facing challenging relationships as well. Particularly if you're in a situation where you are doing this very short-term nomadic living and 
when you're going to find accommodation, you're looking to share with another person, perhaps for you know, financial benefits or because you don't want to live alone because you want to avoid that loneliness situation more. Now, unless you go to a place where you know a lot of people, um, a lot of the time you might have to, you know, just find someone that you can live with um, that is opting for the same lifestyle as you. The great thing is, is it's always very easy to find roommates, but the potential issue there could be that you might not always end up living with people that you totally match with and of course that's not always easy to know that in the beginning but this is a really important thing because um, you know having that really balanced and comfortable and safe feeling in your home environment is so essential just to be able to operate and function as a normal human being on an everyday basis. If say you're having a bit of a difficult situation with your flatmate, then this could really create friction and tension, which is gonna really contribute to that sense of internal stress. And yeah, this was a problem that I, that I did face in the last few months, which um, contributed to a very difficult living environment that I was already having, living in the, the very city center of Lisbon at a time where construction was booming. I had construction on both sides of my house all day long, five, sometimes six days a week, constant drilling. And then at night, not always sleeping well because it was loud from people being out, from drinking, from moving around, tourists all the time, really just had to get out of the city to rest and recuperate. So these are some of my main challenges that I have personally faced um, in my journey as a digital nomad, but I know for sure I'm not the only one in facing these too. Some really great things to be aware of if you are considering starting the digital nomad life, or if you're just quite simply watching this because you wanna see if anyone else out there is facing the same thing as you. If so, you're definitely not alone, and it's really important to be aware of these things. As I said, when we aspire to a certain way of living, we always see it, we see the world with rose tinted glasses um, a lot of the time. And it's definitely important to take into consideration the potential cons as well. So I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching if you made it this far. I would love if you can like and subscribe if you haven't already, if you wanna see more content like this. Share with your friends, share on social media and comment your thoughts below. Um, would love to know some of your experiences that you've had if you are a nomad, any concerns you would like to share if you're considering becoming a nomad or just any general thoughts and opinions you'd like to share. I'm always, always happy to have discussions with people, always happy to, yeah, just talk about, talk about this and um, express your truth, have your voice be heard. And yeah, also if you have any suggestions for future videos, I'm always happy to take them on. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned.